How's it going, everybody? I hope you're all having a wonderful day. In this week's video, we're talking about router bits for beginners and why you should buy them individually over a set. Additionally, I'm going to recommend four router bits for you to get started, as well as a few more bits to grow your collection over time. When I started woodworking, I didn't know very much about routers and even less about router bits. I knew that routers are extremely useful in woodworking, but I also knew that they can be pretty dangerous if not operated properly. In fact, it's the only tool that has actually caused me physical harm, but that's a topic for another day. But because I didn't know where to get started, I started out by buying a cheap set of large collection of router bits, thinking that, you know, I'll have something to get started with and I'll kind of figure out what type of bits that I need. And once I've figured that out, I can buy higher quality bits of those type. But here's the thing, you know, when I bought the cheaper router bits, I didn't really have a point of comparison on how a good router bit is supposed to function. You know, I would get inconsistent cuts, some burn marks, and I thought, well, I guess that's how router bits are. And eventually, when I did take the plunge and bought a nice quality roundover bit, the difference was night and day. And it's sort of like comparing a modern day Stanley hand plane versus a modern day Veritas hand plane. You know, once you've used the two, you know exactly why the Veritas is that much better. And over the last couple of years, I have built a nice collection of these uh, good router bits, and I wanted to impress upon you some of the things that I learned along the way that I hope is of value to you. First of all, I would say stay the hell away from some of the more ubiquitous brands on Amazon and eBay like, um, let's see, Yakumo's, no wood, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, M&A, Yonico, etc. Uh, you know, I've seen some good reviews on these products and I have purchased and used some of them in the past. Um, the difference between them and some of the nicer bits is actually significant enough such that the price difference isn't really worth it in my opinion. So, what are some of the nicer brands of router bits? In my opinion, there are three companies that kind of take the cake in that lead and they are Freud, Whiteside and Amana. Uh, I have purchased all three of those brands in the past and I have plenty of them and I have had zero regrets on any of those purchases from the perspective of quality and performance. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule. Uh, you know, Rockler and CMT, I would say also produces really good bits, but the price difference between them and the Freud, Amana and Whitesides isn't really that big. And I would even say that the, the three that I recommended are slightly better than your typical uh, Rockler bits and your CMT. Bits. The second thing that I would say is, in my humble opinion, there are no router bit sets that are perfect. Uh, you know, I'm referring to your crappy brands as well as your name brands, like I mentioned. You know, nobody really makes the perfect bit set that really fits the needs of most woodworkers to start out with. And the rule of thumb that I would say is, if you take a really good hard look at the set that you're considering, and kind of count the number of bits there, and how many of them you would actually use in your typical day-to-day -day, uh, workshop. And if you're not thinking 70 to 80% of them, chances are that collection of router bits is really not worth purchasing because you're gonna get much more value by buying the specific bits that you actually need for your shop. I found the four most practical and useful bits that I use most frequently in my shop that I'm going to recommend to you today. And if you're into conventional type of woodworking and you're not doing anything kinky or out of the usual, uh, these router bits should fit your needs very, very well. And if you're an advanced woodworker or intermediate woodworker who has been doing this for some time and these bits are not in your collection, I highly recommend that you add them to your collection. Okay, so first up we have the roundover bit. Uh, this is absolutely a staple in a woodworking shop. Uh, they come in various sizes and they often come with a bearing attached to the top. The sizes can be anywhere from an eighth of an inch all the way up to maybe one and a half inch, which would be an incredibly large size. The most common size, I would say, is the quarter inch bit that I have here. And by quarter inch, it really means that, you know, if you take a radius and you create a full circle, uh, so a quarter inch circle, um, which would be a half inch diameter, and if you take a quarter segment of that arc that circle creates, that's what the profile of this roundover bit is going to create for you. I find that the quarter inch is the ideal size to start out with because anything smaller than that, you certainly can use a sandpaper and use your hand to kind of break those rough edges. Anything bigger tends to be more on the rare occasion and special circumstances and certainly for those situations you can get a bigger bit as you need them. In addition to the roundover profile you can take advantage of the full cutter head where there's a little bit of an extra space and you can use that to create a more decorative profile or trim for your projects. 
In my opinion, I think uh, Freud makes the best roundover bits, and there's only one reason for that, and that is their quadro cut series of roundover bits, where they not only have the two cutting profiles that you find in most roundover bits, there is two additional profiles that are set at a slightly different geometry, and they sort of work in synchronization to produce a much more smoother, vibration-free and burn-free cuts. And if you work with maple and cherry, which we both know that, you know, they burn at the site of a tool, you're going to get much cleaner cuts out of these quadra cut series of roundover bits. Next, we have the 45 degree chamfer bit. And if you think you'll mostly use the roundover bit and you don't really have a need for this bit, that's fine. I used to think that way as well until I bought this bit. You know, for the longest time, I relied on my block plane to do all of my chamfers, and that works really, really well for the most part. But when you start getting into organic shapes and things that have curves and things like that, the roundover bit is going to be your best friend because it's going to provide you the smoothest, most consistent and professional looking results. Now I do have chamfer bits in various sizes, but I really like the quarter inch shank small size version because rarely are you making a chamfer that's bigger than this, I think it's like a half inch or so. You know, if you're making any chamfers bigger than that, you probably want to use the router table uh, and have bigger bits for that. But more than not, I use the little guy here on a trim router because most of the time you're doing chamfers, you're just taking off a little bit of material and you're just trying to clean up uh, you know, some hard edges. And this does a really, really good job and the small size I think is actually positive in this case. The third bit that I recommend is a straight bit. More specifically, I'm recommending a spiral upcut bit that has been ground from a solid piece of carbide. There are alternative options out there with straight bits that just have carbides on two ends, but I recommend you avoid those for three main reasons. This is going to be better at plunge action because it has cutters at the full length of the tip as opposed to the other option. So you can start you know, plunging right into a piece of wood and then carry on with the cut. This will let you do it more efficiently. The second reason is because of the spiral nature of this bit, only a small amount of the cutter head is actually making contact with the wood and actually doing the cut. And the geometry produces a slicing action where the straight you know, bits with just the two piece of carbide all of that cutter head makes contact with the wood at the same time and that introduces a ton of vibration and this one does not. The third reason is again the geometry of this bit. It has two flutes but it's also at a spiral shape so whenever it cuts the piece of wood it ejects it right out of there and clearing way for more air to keep the bit cool and making more space for the chips to clear out once more after it cuts it. So for those three reasons, I recommend this bit. This bit is extremely important to me in the shop. I use it for pretty much anything uh, really. Uh, I can use it to hog materials wherever I need to. I use it in my CNC machine. You can make small channel dados with this. You can also clear materials for butterfly inlays or if you're installing hinges, um, you can also even use this to make dados for floating tenons. It just has a ton of options for use and it is an indispensable tool for me. And the fact that it only costs $20 really adds to the value proposition of this bit. If you don't have one, just buy it. You won't regret it for a second. And my final recommendation is a flush trim router bit. A flush trim router bit has cutters that are perfectly in line with the bearing. Thus, you can use the bearings as a guide to precisely trim excess material in the shape of the pattern that you ride the bearings onto. I know, that's a mouthful, but basically you can use this to ride onto a template and it'll, you know, trim the excess material. I often use a flush trim router bit to round over corners by using a corner template on coasters and cutting boards and things like that. Uh, sometimes whenever I'm cutting a shape with a CNC machine and I don't have the ability or it's not safe to cut all the way through the material, I'll cut most of the way through and then I'll use the flush trim bit to clear out that uh, remaining material. And of course, if you do any type of template work for you know, repetitive furniture making or anything like that, a flush trim bit is going to be an indispensable tool for you. In my opinion, the half inch bit is going to be perfectly satisfactory for most of you guys that are just starting out woodworking. Although if you start with a quarter inch, I think you'd be pretty happy as well. Uh, the 7 eighths of an inch is probably going to be an overkill. And if you don't have a smaller one, I think a 7 eighths inch is going to be a hindrance to your woodworking with the flush trim bit. 
So in my opinion, those are the four router bits that I would recommend that you purchase to get started in woodworking. Once you've spent a little bit more time in the hobby and you get a sense of what type of woodworking you like to do, you can use that as a jumping off point to buy additional bits for your collection. So you might want to get smaller or larger size bits of the ones that we talked about today, or if you're doing something more specific, let's say you want to make cabinets and you might want to get raised panel bits, or if you're into live edge furniture work, you definitely want to buy a slab flattening bit. Uh, so you can kind of use this as a jumping off point and determine what you need in the future. And I think you'll be very happy with these four bits that I'm recommending to you for starting out with. Well, that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're not a subscriber already. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate your support and I will see you on the next one.